The lights are perfectly positioned, cameras expertly angled. I straighten my news anchor worthy gray button blazer and pull back my shoulders as I've done for the past four years. With one minute until air, I glance down at my scribbled list of speaking points and find the one reserved for this final address. What advice would you give to incoming freshmen? I found myself reflecting back to the summer before freshman year. I was flipping through TV channels and fortuitously landed on KBEV Channel 6, Beverly Hills High School's broadcast news station. I watched in awe as students not much older than I was at the time were speaking confidently and passionately about community issues. I aspired to abandon my introvertedness and serve as a vocal leader in my community. I learned that KBAB would be an opportunity for me when I entered high school, and I was more than eager to take it. The day I began high school, I sought out Mr. Carey, the director of KBAB. The thought of me, a freshman, approaching the director of the most popular program on campus became overwhelming. I spotted him and blurted out my scripted request to join his advanced broadcast journalism class. Luckily, Mr. Carey gave me a shot. Two weeks into the class, our first live broadcast was ready to air. I had rewritten and rehearsed my five line story too many times to count. Sitting behind the teleprompter, I attempted to quell my nerves. My attention shifted to the blinking red light and I began my story. My voice quivered. But as I continued through the piece, I pictured my face on my own TV and knew that I had become the woman I wanted to be, confident and fearless in expressing herself. My voice steadied. I looked over at Mr. Carey and he smiled affirming that my journey to finding my voice was well underway. My voice quickly became a huge part of my identity. Over the past four years, I have been the voice of a variety of local issues and have spoken to audiences and to local community members. As my voice and experience had broadened, I have fostered a symbiotic relationship with my local community, not only reporting for them, but on them. For every story I researched and reported on, I would remind myself who I was hoping to inform and to inspire. They are the confused students who are wondering why their favorite teachers are being laid off. They are the community members eager for more information before a vote. They are the parents concerned for their children's safety. And they are the aspiring reporters flipping through channels, hoping to end on channel six. As that realization set in, I had the unequivocal answer to my question. The lights in the KBF studio dim, the cameras zoom in. My final answer, find your voice. Hi, my name is Alex McDermott and I was lucky enough to join MORTORC, Beverly's robotics program from the beginning of freshman year. Mordrick takes part in FIRST Robotics Competition, in which teams have about six weeks to build competition-ready robots for a brand new playing field every year. Over four years and more than 1,000 hours in the machine shop, I've learned many things, and I'd like to share two of my biggest takeaways with you. First, there's never enough time. There's never enough resources, and there's always too many things going on in your life. On top of that, the machines you rely on will break down. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of which ones and when. In robotics, we call these issues constraints. I won't pretend that they're fun. Cutting sheet metal by hand when the bandsaw breaks is very much the opposite. But the reality is, is that there are a few things in life that come without their own set of expected and unexpected constraints. And at the end of the day, they really are constraints and not barriers. What I've learned is that the end product is far more influenced by how you work within the constraints than what the actual issues are. 
Because when we get to competition, the good teams are not just those with the most money or the most adult mentors. And the best teams are the ones that made smart engineering trade-offs and that prioritized their robots' abilities to maximize effectiveness. Those that worked in within the constraints to the best of their abilities. And even when everything goes wrong and your systems stop working, just having a working set of wheels, the bare minimum, can do wonders for helping your alliance to victory. My second takeaway is about the spirit of FIRST and how it will translate to the rest of my life. The highest award FIRST Robotics gives isn't for what your robot does on the field. Instead, it's about what your team does in the community. How do they spread STEM? Our first outreach event this year was with an organization called Friendship Circle of LA, a group that provides activities and community for children with special needs. At the end of the event, I was so excited for what we were going to do next. It was so easy. Why hadn't we been doing this before? Volunteering isn't a new concept, and it's not the only way to help people. So I say this not to toot my own horn, but as a reminder of how simple and enjoyable it is to share a passion. Every pursuit from engineering to art, finance to language, has the ability to change a life when you take the time to share it with someone else. So, as we all begin new paths, I challenge you to ask yourself how you will find meaning in your passion and who you can share it with along the way. Thank you. Do you remember when we were younger and we all wished to have superpowers? We wanted to teleport to different places in the world or have the super strength to be everyone at dodgeball during recess. But today, our graduation day, we wish to stop time we wish we could freeze time when we stood atop the deck of podium or when we played in the last quarter of the Samuel game. But we, just like time, are unstoppable. Throughout these four years, we have grown from being sidekicks to being the superheroes ourselves. We watched as every year we grew older and challenged ourselves to become greater. We painted our paths and forged the way for others by challenging the status quo and letting our imaginations run wild. As we say goodbye to these buildings that shaped us, we must always remember our moments of strength and achievement that allowed us to create our high school masterpieces. I will never forget the different life lessons I learned from DECA and the Medical Science Academy that shaped my journey today. Additionally, this year, serving as a senior class vice president, I was able to not only serve the class of 2020, but also create memories that I will remember and cherish for the rest of my life. Filled with memories of homecoming, formal, color wars, and pep rallies. Throughout these four years, we each created our own high school masterpiece. As a result, we developed the strongest power of all, the ability to be artists of our own stories. Today, we cross the finish line together and all begin our new journeys as one. We take our new skills and friendships with us and use them to guide us on our new path. Today, we switch our high school masterpiece for a blank canvas which we must decorate with our new hopes and dreams. We will choose new paints, reflecting our ever-changing environment and excitement towards our new journeys. As artists, we will mold our canvases to create a beautiful new masterpiece shaped by our deepened understanding of the world and ourselves. As time passes, we will continue to develop our masterpiece as our dreams grow bigger and our passions become deeper. However, as we embark on our journeys, we will never forget our high school masterpiece that forever shaped our lives and inspired us to be real life superheroes. Seniors, we faced all our opponents, won all our battles, and now we are ready to rescue the world. There will be many more battles ahead, but never forget that you have the determination and passion to be any opponent you may face. I have no doubt that we will be the future superhero doctors, lawyers, and firemen, shaping the lives of others and making the world our masterpiece. And now, just like superheroes, we will continue to fly up, up, and away. Congratulations, class of 2020. And let's continue to soar high and become the superhero leaders of the world. It was the third Wednesday of my freshman year. My link leader and close friend, Jessica Mogadam, dragged me to my first DECA meeting. I sat in the back row of the Cherney Lecture Hall and watched in awe as the officer team spoke about the year to come. They had fire in their eyes as they described club day, competitions, networking events, and career day. I immediately knew this was something I would become a part of. 
Now with the same fire, I stand in front of our graduating class as the president of DECA. Throughout high school, we've all had these moments of passion, the fire. Let's begin at the blurry part, freshman year. We all showed up nervous to meet our new classmates with sharp new haircuts and clothes, backpacks filled with empty binders and labeled folders to match. But as time passed, we got to know each other and discovered that we are all so different. We began to learn more about each other's passions, perspectives, experiences, dreams, and aspirations through encounters we had both inside and outside of the classroom. That is what we have come here today to celebrate. Although it has not been the semester we envisioned at all, we must still applaud ourselves for all the hard work, the early morning cram sessions and late night grinds, the sports practices and the club meetings, the weekends full of SAT prep and college application writing. We've shown up to give it our best even during this sad, scary and uncertain time. Despite this, I am filled with nothing but confidence in our graduating class's ability to confront the multitude of issues currently plaguing our country and world. How will we use this sad and unexpected turn of events to learn and grow as we have during these years in high school? How will we learn to appreciate life and health more than we did before we were faced with these challenges? As we move on to the next phase of our lives, whether that be a four-year university for some or a job for others, we must make it our life our life's work to make this world a better place? How will we be there for each other and support each other during devastation like this? We must all use the knowledge we have gained during the last 13 years spent in classrooms, on the yard, on school trips, and most importantly with each other. While we aren't having the typical graduation where we finally get to walk the stage and receive our diploma, surrounded by family, friends, and mentors, we will still begin to silently take our new roles. We will transform from high school students into the innovators, artists, teachers, doctors, scientists, advocates, athletes, CEOs, and much more. We will discover countless ways to benefit the lives of every human on this planet. A lot of us have been fortunate enough to, been bor to have been born in positions of great privilege, and I urge you all to use this privilege and your voices to speak up for those who were not as fortunate. So during this time, after we grieve what we have lost, we must go back to work, doing what needs to be done to help everyone suffering from the disaster that is preventing us from walking the stage. We must remain positive, support one another, have the courage to act with integrity, and we must be kind. So before you take off and start your own life for the first time, remember, most of you did not get where you are through good luck, good looks, or good fortune, but rather hard work, dedication, and integrity. Thank you to the class of 2020 and all of our supporters.